Hi everybody! So, it's quite an exciting post today because it's the first episode of my historical collection series. Basically every episode I'll introduce a new item and have a bit of a chat about it. So, to kick things off we have my letter from 1745. Well, it's all very exciting because anybody who knows me knows the key to my heart is through old letters. Also, people ask why I wear gloves. It's basically to protect the paper from anything that might be on my hands and to protect my hands from anything that might be on the paper, such as boxing, for example, which is basically just mould. Um, so yes, without further ado, let's go get the letter. So the first document I want to show you is a will. This was written in Edinburgh in 1745 and it is about what happens to the property after the occupant passes away. So here's just the front of it. The handwriting is beautiful and makes me very envious that my handwriting is nothing like this. This is the back of it too. So I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about dates and why it is that I never get asked on any. <laughs> so I'm sorry, no. Um, so let's talk about dates on letters. Now I've been referring to this letter as being written in 1745 when really it says 1744. Now it wasn't until the Calendar Act of 1752 that the year officially began in England on the 25th of March, not the 1st of January, although New Year's was celebrated. So if you see a document before then, you have to add on a year. So sending letters in the 18th century was really expensive, so to save on postage people would do what's called cross-lettering. They would write horizontally and then turn the paper and write down the margins there and people had different hands which they felt could represent themselves the best. Women often went for the italic hand to look a bit more feminine and a bit more delicate whereas men went for a more robust sort of straightforward form of handwriting to look confident as they get their point across on the page. By the mid 17th century, French officials had documents written in different hands and they began to complain that they were hard to decipher, so they decided to restrict all legal documents to three hands only, called the Coulet, Ronde and Speed Hand. In England there were copybooks based on the French Ronde. In the 1680s, the English developed this into the English round hand style, so that by the mid 18th century, the round hand style became very popular. One thing I really do enjoy when reading old letters is to see the very human mistakes made in them. Crossouts and corrections, as you can see there's a few on this page. We can see by the ligature here that this is cursive writing, where some of the characters are joined and written together to write faster, and it's intended to be used in everyday writing, where the style can be looped, italic or connected, which makes it far more casual. Paleography is the studying of handwriting. And one thing to bear in mind when reading old letters is that in the English language and the spelling wasn't standardised until the 18th century, so letters before that were often spelt phonetically with different vowels and also original dialects. Sometimes the writers would say words differently to another person and so that has to be interpreted too. An issue of cursive is that we often struggle to work out certain letters. A way to combat this is to count the minims in a word, a minim being a single downstroke of a pen, I being one and M being three. So I hope you enjoyed my little video on my 1745 letter. I do have other letters in the collection from the 18th century, but I think they need a bit more work before I'm going to be doing a video on them, just because I still want to have the time to decipher them and really understand what they're about before making any sort of educational video on them. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.